name is Deacon Zaytraban. Um, my home parish is the National Shrine of Little Flower in uh, Royal Oak Basilica. Um, if I don't add that word in, I might get hit by someone. Um, and I grew up actually born and raised in Southfield, Michigan, but uh, when I was around uh, 10 or 11, I moved to Sterling Heights, Michigan, and that's where my family currently lives. Well, I grew up in a family where my father uh, is not a Christian and my mom was uh, Catholic. And so I grew up in a Middle Eastern home. Both of my parents are from the Middle East. And uh, religion wasn't a super big deal for us growing up. Um, my parents uh, divorced when I was very young. So I grew up with my uh, maternal grandparents raising us as well as uh, me and my one sister. And also uh, my mom busy working, uh, trying to provide for me and my sister. And um, my grandfather, my mom's dad, was a very avid, devout uh, churchgoer, went to mass at the shrine um, every Sunday. And um, he's really started to plant seeds of faith in me and my sister. And I really particularly loved spending time with grandpa, hearing what he had to say about God and the Bible. And, and uh, we would go to church with him. And, um, Part of going to church was a selfish reason because he'd take us out to a restaurant that now closed in Oak Park for lunch after. So um, I guess uh, going to mass always uh, sounded and tasted well, but uh, we always, um, you know, enjoyed that time with grandpa. And then, um, you know, we would spend time with him afterwards for lunch. And um, my grandpa suddenly died when I was um, around 11 or 12 years old from cancer. And that really took a big toll on me because he was very close uh, to me. A very, you know, close um, man, father figure, a person of faith in my life. And so at that age, I started to discern about um, well, what can I do to, to serve God um, at Shrine, which is a church my grandpa loved. And he also served there as an usher. So I began altar serving um, around the age of 12. And um, not knowing anything about the Mass, not knowing anything about my Catholic faith, I really started to fall in love with it, ask questions, started altar serving, uh, serving in the youth group at my church, and going on um, some World Youth Days, um, other activities, Steubenville Conference, and I really felt a nudge to become a priest. Um, a friend of mine says she remembers me saying that in fifth grade that I wanted to become a priest, but um, I think I must have had too much chocolate milk because I don't remember saying that. But anyways, um, you know, so I, I discerned basically for most of my life until I um, entered the seminary, which is about eight years ago, and uh, in my uh, late, well, early 20s, about 22, 23. So one of the highlights for me that um, I uh, really appreciated back then and appreciated more so now is the great uh, education that we had, that we were given, um, particularly amidst all the wonderful professors but I have to put in a plug for our scripture professors because um, I really feel like our scripture professors at Sacred Heart are, you know, the best in the world. Um, and I just feel very blessed to have uh, such a well esteemed um, faculty that people know from all over the world. And so I really feel like my education, theological education, as well as my philosophy education, which I didn't really appreciate at the time, but uh, especially teaching now morality for a couple weeks, filling in in the, in the high school where I'm assigned in Monroe, um, I, I really see the benefit of my uh, education and how I'm able to use what I've learned uh, to teach about the faith and especially in today's very secular culture, um, you know, how to uh, respond to uh, moral issues, um, you know, with reason and logic um, so I, that's, that's one highlight. The other highlight is the uh, fraternity amongst the brother seminarians from all over the country that come to Sacred Heart. And um, uh, that's also been a, a really uh, bright source of inspiration to me hearing and seeing how God is calling other people um, around, uh, around the world, especially here in, in America through the different dioceses that come. Um, and then obviously the many dioceses from Michigan who send to Sacred Heart. 
how am I preparing for my ordination? Um, well, I am uh, very blessed. My, my path, unlike some of the uh, other deacons uh, this year, I am in full-time ministry um, as a transitional deacon. I graduated actually from Sacred Heart last spring with my MDiv and STB, and uh, I've been assigned to um, a full-time ministry at two parishes in Monroe, uh, Michigan, um, St. John the Baptist and St. Mary. Uh, St. Mary is actually the second oldest parish in the Archdiocese after St. Anne's, and I have never been to Monroe County, so I um, feel like now I can give someone a little tour of Monroe County, um, but uh, I've really enjoyed the past uh, almost 11 months, uh, going into almost a year serving here since June 1st. Um, I've been involved in many different activities in the parish uh, considering the pandemic, um, I've used the opportunity to uh, discern where God is calling me to serve. And uh, one of the things that I've done to prepare myself in ministry is, is doing Bible studies. Um, through the grace of God, um, he's been able to use this weak uh, instrument to um, teach the Bible to uh, three, I did three different Bible studies over Zoom throughout the course of the year. Uh, using a lot of what I learned in scripture classes at the seminary, but also doing my own research and uh, drawing over 70 to 80 um, uh, people joining us every week for Bible study uh, from the parishes as well as from the vicariate. Um, so that's been a source of blessing for me, as well as being involved in the school, uh, Monroe Catholic Elementary School and St. Mary Catholic Central, uh, the high school here. Um, considering the pandemic and the difficulties with it, I've tried my best to be engaged in the school, getting to know the students um, and the teachers. And now for the past couple of weeks, uh, filling in for a sophomore teacher, um, but I was also asked to help teach a seventh grade last semester. So I definitely uh, learned many new things and feel very humbled to be able to serve. I would, um, you know, that's a difficult question. I knew you were going to ask me that. So, um, you know, in, in my own um, growth and in my own reflection about priesthood throughout the years from the priests that I've known growing up and especially um, looking at the priests of today and in my own ministry as a deacon and in full-time ministry, um, I really have uh, sensed that the people of God uh, just want someone who is relatable someone who's human, uh, someone who um, serves with humility. And um, that's the priest that I'd like to be, that the gospel is good news. And, um, you know, I, I'd like to be that bridge um, uh, for people. Um, in my own way, growing up in a family where my father is not Christian um, and of a different religion, I, I, I see in God's providence how he's using me amidst my my weaknesses and faults that, you know, he would still draw me to, to be able to be a bridge. And um, I think, you know, especially in a parish that I've been serving at with the school, with families, sports, all different age groups, um, I think people just really are, 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 are yearning to see someone growing in holiness, but also someone who's relatable, someone who's normal, someone who, uh, you know, um, they can talk to someone who doesn't come down as condescending or, um, you know, I know it all and you don't. And unfortunately, that's turned people away from the church. And, um, um, you know, I am, I, I'm just a sinner that God has called uh, to be a servant. And um, I, I take also the type of priest that I'd like to be from my hero, uh, Blessed Stanley Rother, a diocesan priest from Oklahoma, who served as a missionary in Guatemala, um, living up until uh, his very death, becoming the first American-born priest martyr, um, uh, beatified before uh, Blessed Solanus Casey. And one of the things that uh, Blessed Stanley said is the shepherd doesn't run away from his sheep. And that's very much true of his life because he ended up being killed uh, in Guatemala, a country and a people he loved. And so um, I just pray that God would give me the grace and the strength to be able to be a humble shepherd and to be able to uh, be a bridge uh, for people to Christ.